Welcome back to County Connection. We have Alyssa Knox from the um, from Colorado Parks and Wildlife with us again for another segment. Um, and uh, I think we're lucky to have Alyssa uh, here with us today because she is fresh in from the field um, on a uh, a uh, mission to count mountain goats and bighorn sheep. Um, so uh, so we appreciate the fact that you were able to make it in and uh, squeeze us in here at the County Connection studio. Well, thanks for having me. So um, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the biology and behaviors of mountain goats. Uh, mountain goats are one of the very high elevation uh, species that we have here in Summit County and they are not native to Colorado. They were actually introduced I, um, I think in the 50s and 60s oh, okay. and uh, but they're very well adapted to high alpine terrain uh, and living above timberline which we have plenty of here in Summit County oh, Okay. and uh, they have a, an extremely long white coat mm -hmm. and so this thick coat helps them uh, survive in the, the cold temperatures and the high winds up above timberline all year long. And their hooves are uniquely adapted to uh, walking around on the rocks and the cliffs. Uh, they have, they're, they're very agile. Uh -huh. They might not look like it, but they are. Right, it is kind of amazing when you do have the opportunity to see them, they're like acrobats. They are. Balancing on the tiniest of ledges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about their hooves that um, enable them to, um, to be so agile on these um, precipices? And yeah, their hooves have, have an outer um, ring that's pretty, hard and then inside of that it's it's a lot spongier and their dew claws um, that they have are actually touch the ground a lot of times so with those spongy hooves they're almost able to grip the rocks oh, okay. and they have cloven hooves um, as well so with those two toes on their hooves and their dew claws they're able to grip um, a lot a lot more than you would think and uh, cause they're, they're kind of stocky and um, looking but Man, when you watch them hopping from from tiny cliff edge to tiny cliff edge, even the little kids uh -huh. can do it without falling. It's pretty amazing. All right. So, as an introduced species, do they um, are they in competition for the same habitat as our bighorn sheep? They are, and uh, so we manage the goats very carefully. They are a hunted species. Um, they were introduced for multiple reasons. Hunting was one of those reasons. Oh, also, okay. um, as a watchable wildlife species, and so they they are hunted to help keep the numbers um, at a healthy level, so they don't outcompete the bighorn sheep, which are native to Colorado. Okay, and and so they're competing um, for this is. It, I would imagine similar food sources or maybe the same yep, food sources. It's the habitat and the food sources and they uh they tend to eat um, a lot of the, the grasses and the shrubs that grow up above timberline. They'll also eat the lichens and the moss that grow on the rocks. And uh, in the wintertime, everyone wonders what they eat because there's so much snow up there. But they usually find the south-facing slopes that get, stay blown off uh -huh. um, during the wintertime. Okay. And um, they're able to find enough to eat. That's pretty amazing too. It is. It is. <laughs> they don't need creatures. to migrate up and down, so they're pretty tough critters. Uh huh. So, uh, so tell us. Um, some people may confuse um, bighorn sheep with mountain goats. What are some of the um, distinguishing features between the two? Um, the, the main thing is just their appearance. Um, they're two totally different species, not even in the same family. Uh, so bighorn sheep have the big curled horns, mm -hmm. and the males do, the rams. Um, the females also have horns, but they're a lot shorter. Okay. And uh, they're more brown, tawny, tan in color with a white rump. And then the mountain goats are white or uh, sometimes they get pretty dirty, so they might be a little <laughs> off-white. Uh -huh. And uh, they have the really long coats, and black hooves, and thinner black horns. And both the males and females have horns. And uh, you have to watch them for a while to, to be able to tell the difference. Um, the, the males have slightly thicker horns. The bases of their horns are a lot thicker. Uh -huh. um, and they are more gradual curve. Versus the females, the bases are smaller, smaller than their eye socket. And the horns are straighter with a little curve at the tip. Okay. And, um, and you know, I, I still have to watch them through binoculars um, pretty carefully to be able to tell the difference. Okay. And so you guys spend a lot of time out in the field um, 
keeping track and monitoring mm -hmm. the um, these different populations. And uh, so, what does that work actually look like in the field? How do you go about doing that? Well, uh, we have a couple different um, methods to keep track of both the bighorn sheep and the mountain goats. And uh, throughout the summer, we do ground counts with multiple crews on different trails and different routes uh, for each unit. And we'll go out on the same day. So there's several of us out in the field, and we try and count as many as possible. And um, we count them, we also classify them, which is determining how many are male, how many are female, and how okay. many are young of the year. And uh, then um, sometimes every year, sometimes every other year, we'll do aerial counts from helicopter and fixed wing planes, uh -huh. and we'll fly and count them from the air as well. And, uh, and then for all of the hunters that draw a sheep or a goat license, whether they're successful or not in their hunt, they do have to fill out a questionnaire. And during that time, um, or when they're filling it out, they'll um, say how many different animals that they saw in their hunt. And that information is valuable to us because those hunters spend quite a bit of time in the field. Okay, great. So they're your eyes and ears. They, they are. They're Excellent. out there. Um, they're an asset to us. So. All right. So for people who would be interested in viewing these species of wildlife, do you have any tips um, from you, the experts who are out there tracking them all, all the time? <laughs> I do. I do. Uh, you know, the, the best place to find them um, is above timberline and uh, look for them in the, the green grassy areas. That's They're easier to spot. Okay. There, uh, we do have some populations that are fairly used to people, and um, there are are some issues around the state, including a couple spots in Summit County where people will feed the goats and the sheep to get them uh. close to take pictures. And unfortunately, uh, it's the animals that ultimately end up suffering from this. It, uh, it's bad for their diet, for one, but when they lose that fear of humans, they can be dangerous. And uh, we have dogs that are gored in Summit oh. County every year by mountain goats. Oh, wow. Um, probably because the, the dogs are um, off leash and getting too close, and the, the goats aren't afraid of people. And uh, their horns are extremely sharp, and they can really injure a dog. And uh, we have them that they'll jump on top of vehicles. Um, oh, wow. they'll, they'll chew on vehicles. They'll do a lot of things to try and get human food once they get addicted to it. So okay. uh, we ask that um, please do not feed any of the wildlife, um, especially the, the sheep, the goats, because uh, it, it, it takes the wildness out of them. And if the animal becomes dangerous to people, we have to put it down. So right. we definitely um, don't want to see that. Yeah, so just keep your distance, take pictures, enjoy them. They're magnificent animals. and. Um, and we have a lot of them in Summit County. There's, you can see them in the 10 mile range. You can see them um, all uh, east of Breckenridge. You can see them up around the Eisenhower Tunnel sometimes. Uh -huh. So the, there, we have quite a few populations in Summit County. All right, fantastic. Um, anything that you would like to add about mountain goats or bighorn sheep? No, I think we got it. All so. right. Great. Well, thanks so much, and thanks for the great work that you do um, all year round in Summit County and keeping well, track you. of our wildlife populations and uh, helping us keep a safe distance and protect them. Well, I'm lucky to be here. So, All right. Thanks, Lilissa. Thanks. Um, and uh, stick with us. We are going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about some improvements at the Summit County Shooting Range.